And we're back. I'm Pixie. I'm Sun. And hey. I'm Pyrus. There we go. I was gonna, I was gonna say, don't miss that. Perfect setup. Hey, okay. we're here. So we're back on our uh, fall 2011 to kill a DJ show, raising money for Advocate Hope Children's Hospital Family Assistance Fund. Uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors real quick. Um, awesome Sauce Sprites, whom you can find at... Hang on, I got the website. <laughs> I, I had some forethought to this, I swear. Of course, our studio connection is currently being terrible. Yeah, it is. Which is why I'm having some trouble here. Come on. There we go. Okay. Um, awesome Sauce Sprites, which you can find at awesomesaucesprites.wordpress.com. Uh, Graham Cracker Comics uh, at uh, grahamcrackers.com. It's with an S. Um, Leisure Hours uh, Hobbies uh, from Joliet. Um, their website is leisurehours.com. And the Galloping Ghost Arcade, which you can find at gallopingghostarcade.com. We will be draw- hosting a... Um, well, we'll be drawing the winners for the raffle for those three Galloping Ghost Arcade passes in the sixth hour of our show, so keep listening for that. Or come back later. I don't know. Yep. If you still want to buy a raffle ticket, we are in the WLRA studio on Lewis University campus if you would like to come buy one. Uh, we do accept visitors. Provided you can talk. Anyway... So, you were at War Machine Weekend. I did. I was at War Machine Weekend, which was in Springfield, Missouri, uh, this past weekend. Uh, It ran Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, so that would be the 4th, 5th, and 6th. You know, Springfield, Missouri, kind of in the middle of nowhere. Not what I'd call the the largest area, but uh, a nice town. Plenty of food options available. Um, It was hosted at the Lamplighter Inn. And, yeah, it was totally a weekend of War Machine-focused shenanigans with the entire, like, Midwest crew showing up. So, for those of you who haven't been listening much, War Machine is a uh, very competitive-based miniature war game uh, made by Privateer Press. Uh, It's compatible with their other game, Hordes. And the point of the game is to go into the battle and face off against your enemy's uh, warcaster, the big powerful force that's leading the huge either robots in their army or war beasts. Uh, Very fun game. Uh, We've talked about it several times on the show. It's one of our recurring topics. And yeah, so an entire weekend of events, sorry, events, events based on, on the games. And War Machine Weekend has actually gotten so big that some of the game's creators showed up this year. Uh, Ed Burrell and David Carl, uh, two of the head guys at Privateer Press, actually showed up to participate in the game and show some spoilers and have their own Q&A session. And I understand uh, War Machine Weekend's like coming upon some changes. Yep, uh, we'll get to that towards the end of the segment. But uh, So each day had at least four large-scale events that were going on, as, as well as a another set of smaller events. This year saw the addition of the casual format for those people who, who want to play games but really don't feel up to playing with the, uh, the, the big league tournament players. So just like last year, War Machine Weekend, uh, for every event you played in uh, and finished, you were entered in a drawing to win an army for free Uh, of the size of the game that you had just played. So, for instance, you played in the 50-point tier tournament, tier being a specific way to build an army based on what main character you take in it. You win, if your name got drawn at the end, a 50-point tier army of your choice. Kind of an awesome deal. Mm -hmm. Because for those people who won, you just covered your admission cost and then some. Uh, for those people who were registering at the door, it was fifty-five dollars. Uh, those who pre-registered online, it was forty-five dollars. So, did you win? I did not win anything. I uh, the winners though were all really cool guys, and I'm happy that they won. Uh, I didn't end up winning any events, but then again, I also haven't played War Machine seriously since my last uh, tournament that I went to, which I did end up winning. So I've been on kind of a break, and it showed. Uh, we'll get to that when I talk about how the individual rounds went. 
Uh, we didn't get to stay for Sunday. I only ended up playing in uh, one major <laughs> event for the weekend, which took up the entire day of Friday. And so, seeing as we weren't going to be there the entire time Saturday, I decided to just hang back and play casual for the uh, for the rest of the events. All right, so we ended up getting down there Thursday night, and the event doesn't start until Friday. But suffice to say, most of the tournament players were were there Thursday to just hang out, have some drinks. Uh, the Lamplighter is the hotel and convention center we were at. Most people, for most people, the uh, the actual tournament room that was was holding the events was a less than a minute walk from their hotel room, which is kind of awesome. Now, the lamplighter is kind of small, so you can just pop in and out of the, the game room whenever you want. Uh, they also had the hotel bar open for us. They they brought in extra bartenders because War Machine players are kind of notorious for their drinking habits. Are they now? Yeah, it's kind of one of those games. <laughs> so did you get smashed? I didn't get smashed. I had a drink for a couple of the games. But uh, there, there were a couple people who really, who really funded the hotel bar. Um, they they had specials for us. It, it was kind of nice, and and that's been a tradition of War Machine weekend since the beginning. That yeah, as long as you guys can control yourselves, we don't care if you guys drink while playing. I actually thought that was really cool of them. Uh, there there was plenty of food available. There was constantly something. Really, coming they in can't wait it. till the end of the round. No, sometimes you just want that drink during the round. <laughs> Come on, we've all had that tournament game that's like, yep, I'm, I'm playing the rest of the weekend with a drink in my hand. All right, then. Can't get hung over if you don't stop drinking, right? I think that's some of the players' theory. Um, also, in the evenings, there were other games going on besides War Machine. Like, the, Oddly enough, the popular one being that the, the game is made by Privateer Press. A lot of people just sit around playing games of uh, Ship Captain Crew. I don't know if you're familiar with I that game. I am not. It, it's, a, it's a gambling game, just a, a really simple one. All right then. Uh, so that's always popular the in the evening. The conclusion here is that there needs to be a drinking game based on watching other people play War Machine. That way, if you're not in a round, you can still get drunk. You know, I'm thinking we could work on something like that for next year. Um, we also, uh, my group specifically, uh, me, my brother. Somebody and- brings a gun line. Finish it. <laughs> <laughs> you're done now. Oh, uh, we'll, we'll get into that later. Uh, yeah. Man, I. <laughs> I, I had to smack myself for being that guy at one point this weekend. <laughs> anyway, you were saying... Uh, our crew specifically also brought the game Malifaux to play at the tournament. Um, so outside of the, the main room, they had set up a couple tables for just like a staging area that we kind of took over and set up Malifaux tables on. So we were playing games ourselves, running demos for people, just showing off that game. And the War Machine Weekend crew was actually okay with it. They were like, yeah, totally do this. We're, we're glad to see other games being represented. And we'll get into that more when we talk about next year's plans, but um, I, I was very happy that we could set up that game and play it. And uh, honestly, a couple times every hour, we'd have people walking by and just go, oh, yeah, we play Malifaux, totally. We should have brought our stuff. Or a few people, a couple of the locals actually went and got their Malifaux stuff to bring in and play while we were there. See, this is why you need to carry all your board games with you at all times, even when you're out of the state. Well, that's the nice thing about Malifaux, because all you need is... Now, see, I thought it was silly when people didn't have their Pokewalkers at last year, or not last year, the year before's Gen Con, (laughs) but... I mean, that's small and, like, easily affixable to your person. It's not an entire... I I, I mean, the thing about bringing Malifaux... It's between six and ten models that you need, and a deck of uh, and the deck of cards. That that's all you would need to play Malifaux. It, it's not that hard to just throw that stuff in with your War Machine stuff and bring it. And a couple of people did. A few people are just like, yeah, I brought my Malifaux stuff to paint while I was here. We had a couple of people just set up and and paint between tournament rounds. Um. So yeah, I guess we can go into the events that I played in. Sure. Uh, the first day that we were there, they were running three events. They were doing the casual opening tournament, which was 35 points. Uh, the deal with the casual events is there wasn't an army up for grabs in those. Uh, it was just if you played in a casual tournament, at the end of the weekend, they would draw one person for all of the casual events. 
to win an army, uh, just a 35.1. So there was still reason. I think they basically did this just to prevent the the higher end tournament players from effectively scalping the the casual events. Like, yeah, I could totally go dominate this one, and I could win an army. Mm-hmm. So to to keep them to the the more hardcore events, they specifically set that at one army for all the casuals. Makes sense, yeah. since those guys are being cheap anyway. Right. Um. So they they ran the casual event. They also had the fifty point last chance invitational qualifier. They always do their big invitational tournament for the winner of the whole event on Sunday. And in order to get into that, you had to qualify by winning another War Machine event somewhere. Uh, the one that I won wasn't large enough to qualify. I think the, the qualifying events have to be at least 25 people to count. So they they ran the 50-point, which is what I played in. They also ran the 35-point opening salvo tournament, which was a smaller event that mostly was being played by the guys who had already qualified for the, the finals. So... Uh, the last chance qualifier, I ended up going uh, three wins, two losses. Uh, I played my first game against a Trollblood player. Uh, Trollblood's being the the big, bluish, tough army. It's the army that everything in it has the tough rule in the game. They don't die easily. They can hit hard, but you have to set up properly for it. And so it it had been at least... About two and a half months since I'd played a game of War Machine, because I've been kind of on a break since uh, since I won Icon. Gotta say, when you're gonna go to a tournament, you should really do some prep work, because I got to that first match and took twice as long as I should have playing rounds or playing turns. Uh, forgot my Warcaster's feet. Very. Yeah, you were telling me about that on the ride here, and I was like, you can do that. Well, it. Specifically, the round was it. There was a square objective in the center of the table, and you had to have a model in the objective, and your opponent couldn't have any models in the objective, and then you'd score a point. Two points wins the game. And I really could have won it on turn two had I managed to remember that I had a feat, because he had like three or four models in the zone. And my character's feat specifically was that all of my models get to step forward three inches, perform an extra attack, and then end for the turn. Okay, I feel better now that I know that feat is spelled F-E-A-T. Yes. Because I thought you had forgotten the feat, like the thing at the bottom of it. No, I did not forgot, forget that my models actually had feet. I forgot that they had the feat, F-E-A-T. They're, they're super ability that they can use once per game. So had I done that, not only would I have killed those four models and managed to push him out of the ring to acquire a point during my turn, I would have been able to move up all of my models to block him from getting in the zone next turn. Which meant I would have been able to win that one. Way to go. Yeah, you should practice for tournaments that you go to. <laughs> As opposed to playing some other game all the way up until the night before. Yeah. Yeah, it. I, I definitely could have won that one had I remembered that. So yeah, lost in the first round, which meant I was knocked well, out. Maybe refreshing yourself by reading the rules before you go. Yeah, no, I was reading Malifaux books on the way down. And you were all kinds of doing this wrong. Yeah, I failed. Did you win at the Malifaux? No, I actually lost both of my Malifaux games this weekend because I was playing against tournament-grade Malifaux players, and I just got into it. Oops. Well, this really didn't work out at all. Ah, I had fun, which is what the important thing is. So, lost in round one, which knocked me out of the runnings for the, uh, from actually getting in the invitation, which is fine. Thanks. Thanks, Megatron. Um, but that meant that I got to spend the rest of the time just kind of messing around. So, one of the things that I did, uh, for round two was, uh, my brother and the, the other guy that we had come with, uh, Nate, helped me design a list for what's effectively the most hated Warcaster in the Signar army, which would be the epic version of Haley, uh, kind of known as the the ultimate broken button. She kind of just plays the list herself, and you're just there watching. And so I used her for the next two rounds. I played against a 
Let's see, who was the first guy? It was a... And why can't I remember? It was a Crix player. So you've heard me complain about Crix many, many times, I'm sure. Uh, picks. Crix, they're not my friends. I hate dead things. That you do. But this list was, and you can try to visualize it, just a smorgasbord of the most hated things. And we don't get to use that word often enough. You right. know what else we don't get to use often enough? This Cornucopia? <laughs> this zinger here. Mommy! <laughs> uh, the zinger that started it all. Man. So much hatred. Since we were on the topic of things you hate. Right. So... Get you in character. Here, you can visualize this list. This is this is the most dreaded things in the Signar army all piled into one list. So we've got Epic Haley, the most hated caster. We've got the Squire, the most, like, jealously looked at attachment in the game. It just makes everything good. Uh, she had her personal warjack, the Thorn, who is pretty much a super arc node. Always fun. And she had a Hammersmith, the best eight-point warjack in the game. So that's her group. We also had the Arcane Tempest Gun Mages, who are the most hated ranged unit in the Signar faction, because they're just all kinds of utility. The Black 13th, which is the super three-man version of that unit. <laughs> it's smaller, but oddly enough, they're more powerful. Gorman to Wolf the best two-point solo in the game. Epic Iris, the best three-point solo in the game. Oh, and a Storm Strider. The, the Signar battle engine that Haley just makes ridiculously good. What's that? I want all of my shots to aim with three dice. I don't or I want to be able to stand still and move and Haley can just cast telekinesis to move me herself. So yeah, I, I honestly had a couple opponents just look at that list and go, no, d not happening. I, I did have someone just like concede right off the bat looking at it. And I, I only played the list uh, three times, but every time it was just like, I hate your list. I don't hate you, but I hate everything about what you're about to do to me. Sounds like a balance problem with the game. A well-balanced game shouldn't have lists that are wildly OP. You can beat it, as my, my last round opponent proved, but man, is it an uphill battle at that point. That That is a list that is specifically designed to win in scenarios rather than just straight killing power, although my second round opponent learned what it can do killing power-wise because uh, turn two, Haley popped her feet, which is... You have to forfeit half of your activation, so half of each model of what each model does, you have to give up. So you can either move or you can do an action, but you can't do both in a turn. And I get to decide what order you do it in. So if you're playing one of those characters that like specifically buffs the army, if I don't let him go, if I choose him to go last, your entire army's working uh, effectively from a cripple state. Haley's known for having one of the best feats in the game, and it shows. So basically what happened is I, I popped feet. He didn't know how to react to it, just kind of moved things without much consideration because he basically rode off the turn. And because of that, next turn I was able to just move the Storm Strider within range of his Warcaster and fire off three fully charged shots into her and cooked her. Right in the face. So yeah, Epic Scar was Epic Nuked. Whoops. Most of the army didn't even actually have to go, and it was just two shots to finish her. Harsh. Yeah, that opponent was just like, I don't know what I could have done against that. So in a, in the best sportsmanship I could, I, I we literally walked through the game and figured out what he could have done to actually stop me and win in that scenario. And that's that's another thing that I really like about War Machine Weekend. Everyone is there to have a good time and to be friendly. The number of people who are just going to be jerks after games or during games is so low that that you don't have to even worry about it. 
that if you lose horribly to someone, you don't need to get mad or frustrated, expect it to be rubbed in your face. You can expect them to help you out, to go over what you could do better in the future. Uh, so let's see. Round three. The round where my opponent literally looked at my list and went, he got nothing. <laughs> he was playing um, a minion list, specifically Gators. Uh, Bloody Barnabas was his warcaster. For those of you who don't know, the Gator faction is entirely melee. Gators don't have guns. Makes sense, right? They do their thing by hiding in the swamp, getting in close, and then eating you. Like a real gator would. Indeed. Unfortunately, Good thing they don't have guns, because if I ran into a gator with a gun, I I would be unhappy. <laughs> there, there is one gator in their nice army that save, actually Pyro. is armed. Nice save. Uh, let's see. Wrong Eye actually does have a, uh, a shotgun, I believe. But the rest of them are completely melee-based. They have nothing for ranged. And so I ended up playing the Haley list again because I thought it would be funny. And he kind of just looked at me and went, no. Because that's all you can do in that situation. Uh, Why you know you stuff I can shoot at? Basically what the game came down to is I had... You, the objective was you need to hold this territory in the middle of the board and then capture a flag that's off to the right. Uh, it was about, I think, 12 inches away. I sent my little three-man super uh, pistolier unit to go take it, and the rest of the army just kind of bunkered down in the middle of the board. I had moved up fast enough that I was holding the uh, the objective really early. And when he had sent one of his bigger... Uh, war beast, a, a giant crocodile called uh, Snapjaw to go get the objective back. Basically, all I had to do was use the, the three-man super unit. They have a special ability called Thundershot, which it knocks the opponent back three inches, and if it's a critical hit, knocks them over. I pretty much just shot the giant gator back to be out of the range from contesting the objective, and that was it. It's like, I shoot you back, I end turn, I gain a point, game. All right, then. I, I was finished with that game. Uh, we finished the round first, actually. We were the first ones in the hall to be finished with the game. Because that was actually an objective that most people had to fully complete. Uh, they had to play through the full game session. So that was actually when I got to go get lunch, which was cool. Eating is great at tournaments. Okay, then. Yeah, but again, that was an opponent that I just had to apologize to because that was pretty much the list playing itself. I, I I cannot claim much personal talent in that victory. That no, yeah, I think the I think your opponent was kind of stiff there. <laughs> and, and I offered, you know, I'm sorry that was a bad matchup for you. If you'd like later this weekend, why don't we get together and we can play a game where I will play my all melee list. I'm one of the few Signar players who really likes the the storm theme, and so I will run armies of just storm blades and storm lances where I have to get into melee to do well. Mm -hmm. And so opponents get to actually fight back against me. The Haley list, there's not much you can do against that. Because it's a freaking gun line. Cough, cough. It's a gun line, and it's a gun line where you lose a turn. Mm -hmm. You don't get to play your list for one turn of the game. I get to decide how you play your list. So, yeah, it, it's not fair, and it's not fun to play against, and it's something I would only take the most competitive of events. It's not what you'd call a friendly list. Uh, so, fourth round, I uh, had to rotate. Uh, the way the tournament worked is you take two lists, and you have to play them as equally as possible. So, it being a five-round tournament, uh, I had to play one list three times and one list two times. At that point, I'd already played Strike or Haley twice and Striker once, so in order to balance it out so that I could pick what I wanted for the last round, I had to play Striker that round. And I ended up going against a Kador player who was running Karchev. The the Warcaster for people who are like, man, I really want another Warjack. Oh wait, I've got a Warcaster who is a Warjack. So he he played a very average striker or uh, Karchev list. He had Karchev. He had um, 
a unit of, or he he actually took the the Winter Guard Death Star, which is a full unit of Winter Guard, their special unit attachment, their leaders, uh, and Grigorovich, who is their their Superman, the the one of the best solos in the game, and basically the theory is that this giant block moves forward with tough. Has great shooting, has great damage, has great defense, and most opponents just can't break it. That said, I like arcing lightning, and so when one of my yeah you do when one of my models hits you, I'm going to bounce electricity into the next model. So even if you roll tough, I'm going to electrocute the next guy and don't have to roll to hit him. And then the next guy, and then the next, next guy. guy. <laughs> there, there's a theme with my army, it seems. The so, theme that you just really like. So it seemed like the game was going entirely one-sided in my favor. That I was just wiping him off the board. He hadn't crossed mid-table yet. I was playing my striker list, so the, the goal of that list is to move forward as quickly as possible and bring people down. They're amazing in melee, it's just a matter of getting there. So I was doing really well. Crossed the midline, had wiped out the winter guard to, uh, to the best of the degree possible, had wiped out his uh, his mercenary unit. He took the, the Nis Hunters, who are kind of like snow elves. They're really good at shooting, and they're devastating in melee. They just can't survive a hit. So, of course, playing the elite Stormblades, I was able to actually hit them, so they, they crumpled pretty quickly. When my opponent did something that, well, almost made me uh, do what Pyro had just suggested in chat... Karchev has this great skill where he basically attaches toe chains to the warjacks that are near him and drags them along, giving them absolutely amazing movement on what are otherwise the slowest warjacks in the game. He charges forward, charges one of his own models in the back to do this, drags along Beast 09, who's probably the scariest uh, warjack in the Kador army. He's just He's painted uh, special colors. He's usually painted uh, white. He has a giant frost axe. I will say this was a beautifully painted army I was playing against. Absolutely he great. painted with human blood. Yes, he did. For luck. Um, but he drags this warjack with him right into Stryker's face. This warjack rolls four dice on the attack to try to hit me. Stryker at this point was in base to base with uh, his personal warjack old rowdy which gave him a defense of 18 which is ridiculous for a warcaster it's really really high beast 09 has a, a mat of 9 natural or no he has a mat of 7 and was rolling 4 dice to hit me he needed to roll an 11 on 4 6 sided dice to hit me did it once took half of my health out rolled the uh, second time couldn't do it but yeah it wasn't likely to begin with no it was it was totally likely four dice the average is between 12 and 16 I don't know I'd, I'd imagine you'd have to be doing above fours in order to no the average so four dice average roll is three or four mm. So if he rolled all four dice and they came up as threes, he'd have a 12. If he rolled all four dice and they came up as fours, it'd be 16. So the average on four dice is between 12 and 16, all of which would have hit me. Nope. First time he rolls a, a, a nine, the second time he rolls a seven. I got so lucky. And I was telling him for the rest of the game, just like, you had me dead to rights. That was it. You should have won. It was your dice leaving you. Because the one thing about doing that technique... Uh, his warcaster ends up facing the other direction of my army. So Karchev runs around and shows me his exhaust port, and I had one of my larger warjacks run up and plant his sword in it. He's pretty easy to take down once you hit him. He is a warjack. So the Stormclad ran up, hit him once, killed him. Uh, so that was game four, which by all means my opponent should have won that one. I, I did not know Karchev could charge that far or make a warjack go uh, move that far. So he lured me in and did exactly what he should have to win that one. And it was just his dice, which that's one of the problems with these dice games, that sometimes the dice just aren't with you. That's the problem with life. Sometimes it just ain't with you? 
Yep. All right. And then round five, I played against a uh, a minions player. Uh, he was playing as the the pig faction, so I got to play both minions, which is kind of cool in a tournament setting. Uh, he took Lord Carver. And I played against my Haley list thinking, man, that's going to be a really strong combination. These pigs have, like, really short ranges, and I'll just be able to wipe them off the board. Unfortunately, what I failed to realize is that those pigs have tough. And so when you arc lightning into them, they tend to make tough checks. Like, at some ridiculous points, he had made uh, three and four tough checks in a roll on the on these characters, which meant that my attacks meant absolutely nothing against them. I, I was just wasting shots into these pigs. And so he did exactly what he had to to beat Haley. Walked forward, kept making tough checks, and eventually I just couldn't shoot anymore and he wiped me out. Whoopsie. Uh, I, I had to compliment the guy. He ended up getting, I think, third in the tournament overall. So, grats to him, really. But yeah, the, it ended up coming down in the game to, well, the only things I have left are Gorman, who was standing off of the side and just kept uh, throwing blind bombs on Warbeast to, to hold them up. And Haley, who was just like, charge? So, this, this poor girl runs at this giant pig with a two-handed sword using her spear and tries to kill him. And Fortunately, it didn't happen, and Carver turned around and took her out in one shot with his sword. That at that point, I could only compliment my opponent on a hard-fought and well-won game. I, I didn't feel cheated at all. And in fact, he got he ended up playing a much harder game than he would have if I'd picked the striker list. So yeah, overall the the opening invitational qualifier was a really fun event. I had a great time. I'm glad that it didn't go the full seven rounds that they were threatening. At, at the start of the turn, they were like, yeah, we've got so many people. This is going to be seven rounds. I'm like, I don't want to play until 10 o'clock at night. I think you had that problem last year, didn't you? Yeah, last year the opening event was huge. Things I remember. <laughs> Vision from the past. Yep. It's like a ghost come to haunt us well, of staying up all night playing War Machine. And, and that's what you do at this tournament. That's what it is. So the rest well, of the week... That's, that's what everyone except Zen does, because yeah. he's an old man who has to go to bed early. I like going to bed. So he can read it's his nice. morning paper. Actually, what we ended up doing is uh, we went across the street to the Hibachi Grill that's uh, just across the highway, a uh, little Tokyo, which was exceptional. They They do a great job every year. So yeah, we did that. Um, came back, played some Malifo, hung out, talked to people. I don't know if that camera's broadcasting, so I'm flipping you off under these sleeves, just so you know. <laughs> She's really mad that I got good food. Who wouldn't be? So yeah, um, that was the Not Friday. Three people, I guess. Uh, I guess we can move on, because I pretty much spent the rest of the weekend playing Malifo. Woo! So uh, yeah, next, next year... I think War Machine Weekend is going to be better than ever because they're relocating. So instead of the the six-hour drive that it is for us to get there from uh, from Bloomington, they're relocating to the Viking Hotel in St. Louis, which I gotta say I'm totally looking forward to. Uh, so the Viking upper upper grade hotel, middle of the city. Uh, they're going to have an actual, like, retailer room. They're asking one of the local uh, game stores to come and, and furbish that. The hotel bar is 100% behind us. In fact, there's talks right now of hosting a small uh, invitation slash qualifier only event in the bar with full catered food and drinks. I like the idea of having a qualifier for just drinking. You have to prove that you A qualifier for playing in the bar. They've got a little raised area that they're seeing if they can rent out. But really, what this represents is War Machine Weekend going from being a, a small event in an out-of-the-way town to being a major city event. And it's it's gotten so big that this year, actually, two of the lead designers from Privateer decided to show up. Um, and they, they had a panel where they were discussing the future of the game and the company. Uh, they talked a little bit about Horde's domination. Actually, the cool thing was they brought uh, domination spoilers for them to play with. Uh, 
David Carl specifically was just playing open games with people. Like, if someone in the tournament had a bye because there was an uneven number of players, they would just sit down and play a game with you. Kind of awesome. And they were using models that weren't out yet. So Jerks. he was like, yeah, here's the Bone Swarm. It's not out for another month or two, but here's the card. You can look at it all you want, and we're going to play a game with it. What a jerk. Oh, that's awesome. It's a jerk if he, like, makes a new version of the card. Just like, oh, yeah, it's got a mat 20. <laughs> just like... It's just I wave now. It has a million wounds. Making stuff up. I, I control the mechanics of this game, and therefore I will manipulate them to my victory. Look, look, I just uh-huh. win. That's it. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I, I'm going to roll this D6, and if I roll a 1 or higher, I win... You lose. I win. <laughs> so yeah, they they definitely spend a lot of time talking about the upcoming Iron Kingdoms role playing game that's going to be released this year at Gen Con. Totally looking forward to that, by the way. Yeah. New setting to play in, new characters, the ability to actually be a warcaster if you can afford it. <laughs> Think how expensive that would be in game terms. Yes, I've got this giant machine that requires hundreds of pounds of coal and water to operate. I will take it from battle to battle. You'd think they'd just use magic to satisfy their energy needs. Nope. Nope, all steam. I mean, there's a reason we got away from steam. You guys realize that, right? Like, we, we've discovered more efficient uses of, like... <laughs> Oddly enough, the war, mach- the war Machine universe uses the least efficient method of uh, of using electricity possible. What do we do with this electricity? Oh, uh, we'll build it into a weapon or something. We don't need it for power. What? This won't revolutionize our day-to-day lives at all. Yeah, no one's figured out electrical lighting. Everyone took electricity and went, huh, those Signar jerks use it for weapons. What they don't tell you is that they use magic to mine the coal, thereby making it plentiful. So, <laughs> I mean, just use it use it however you want. There's, there's, there's just, it's, the place is lousy with the stuff. Yep. Yeah, apparently. Every nation on Earth uses huge reservoirs of coal for their war jacks. Not for heating or anything. So, yeah. And not for giving to bad children on Christmas. Yep. Apparently, we're adjusting cameras. Um, yeah. Echo's exactly right. What, what, what will we do with our electricity? Throw it at them! It's a good response to almost anything. Ah, this is a thing. I'll just throw it at my enemies. Is it a cat? Is it electricity? Is it a cool martini? Who cares? Who cares? Throw it at your enemies. We'll do some damage. So yeah, I'm um, really looking forward to War Machine Weekend uh, being in a new location. Uh, the main organizer, uh, Carl, specifically said that he he would love to spend all of next year just running Iron Kingdom's role-playing games. That that's what he wants to do. He wants to be running demos and adventures of that uh, instead of organizing the tournament. So right now he's looking for people to, to help run the tournaments. And Privateer is such a great press ganger community that I won't be surprised if that actually happens. Uh, there's also talks right now of potentially spreading it out into other game systems, allowing a small Malifaux event or or at least des- demos being set up. So while, while it will never get to the point of, uh, say, Adepticon or something like that, it, it's definitely becoming its own event rather than just a bunch of people getting together for a weekend of playing this. It, it's becoming a more formal, uh, I don't want to say convention because I don't think it is one, but just an event in general. Yeah, that's... It, it, it doesn't really qualify as a con. I mean, yes, you pay for admission, you go there, and there's a bunch of people who are dedicated to a specific activity, but... That sounds a lot like a con. But there's only one thing to do there. And so I don't think that really makes it... But realistically, if you look at the San Diego Comic-Con, there's also only one thing to do there. Wait in line. Which is still as well. Okay, there you go. That's, <laughs> Zing. that's true of a lot of cons. So yeah, o- overall, I think War Machine Weekend is a fantastic event. And man, I really need to get on these faster. 
It, it really does say a lot about the community that they can host that kind of event uh, for as long as they have without any direct intervention from the uh, from the company itself. But now that the company is taking notice and showing up, it, it just keeps getting better. I was going to play a zinger, but Jeff decided to keep talking. <laughs> Stealer of thunder, destroyer of zingers. I know, right? So yeah, next weekend's looking like it's going to be even better. I uh, can't wait to go. And yeah, the the drinks were plentiful this weekend, and discovered the drunk Russian, which was very enjoyable. I'm sorry. What is a drunk Russian? It is a white Russian that uses. Uh, I'm trying to remember what it was. Pyro doesn't drink. You might have to explain further. Well, it seems like a white Russian is already a drunk Russian. It's a white Russian that replaces the milk or cream with another form of alcohol. I just can't remember which one it was. A white Russian wow. being a vodka that has milk or cream in it. <laughs> white Russian is vodka, Kahlua, and cream. So a drunk Russian is going one step further and replacing those with something else. Here, I will just go ahead and Google this. We are Googling drunk Russian hard. from the studio. It's just a, a cup full of various hard liquors. Pretty much. And ice. Uh, okay. Never using Bing again. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Let's just leave it at that. Awesome. I'll tell you on the break. <laughs> so, uh, there's that. And, I don't know. I, uh, we did sample some of the local food because one of the things I've learned to do anytime you go to a con or a tournament... Find one of the locals and ask them what's good to eat around here. Have them point you to somewhere uh, acceptable. So, like, uh, specifically, Carl pointed us to a place called Crosstown Barbecue, which was just this... It was a little dive that no one who lives outside the city would ever see that had really amazing barbecue. Like, they had the roasters and the wood pile just sitting out there in the back. You could see where they were making the food. So that was really great, and and my highest recommendation, if you ever go to an event, just find out what the locals are eating, what the locals are doing. So yeah, that's War Machine Weekend, and it looks like we're going to take another break. All when right. we come back, we will bring the elusive recipe oh, for the drunk Russian. Um, no, I think we probably shouldn't, it being, you know, where we are and all. Righto, you can Google it yourself. I, I think y'all know how But not on Bing. Not on Bing. <laughs> Do not bing that. There. That's all I'm saying is they're, they're not the best. So yeah, we'll be back after our break with some League of Legends discussion. Uh, also, I'm going to go ahead and put on a pony mix. Pony mix it up. And so in just a second. Here we go. All right. There we are. We'll all be right. back. We'll be back after these messages. 